The tales of two cities, I'm referring to Tampa and Miami, Florida. They're both known for their Cuban sandwiches. Now there's been a rivalry going on between these two cities for quite a few years. And it has to do with more about where did it come from? Who started it first, Tampa or Miami? Uh, which one is more authentic, Miami or, or Tampa? And so this video is really not about the history. You can find everything you need to know online. There's a lot of information on that with dates and everything. And you can kind of draw your own conclusion on what you believe the uh, authentic is and what it was born out of. I have my opinion, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. But what this video is about is showing you how to construct the different sandwiches. They're basically the same except for one ingredient and that's the only difference. So we're gonna get started with it right now. We're gonna start with the bread. I'm gonna show you what we're using. To me, this is a very key component to the sandwich because it's not a real Cuban without real Cuban bread. And any Cuban sandwich connoisseur will tell you that. So let me show you what I got. I got La Seganda Bakery bread. This has been in business since 1915. It's authentic Cuban bread made with lard inside of it and everything else. What's so cool about this bread is when they bake it, they put a strip of palmetto leaf right across here. And when this bakes, that leaf will begin to cut into it and create these indentions. You'll see it better when I unwrap it. But this one actually left the leaf in there. You can see it right here. That's a palmetto leaf, it shrunk up. And that also gives it just a bit of a sour taste right in there. So we got it, we got the real deal. I'm gonna go ahead and slice these in half. Another thing about this bread is it's 18 inches in length and the Cuban sandwich has to be nine inches. So they're designed to give you two Cuban sandwiches. Cut it in the middle, you got nine inch Cuban sandwiches. Now they do sell these like 38 inches or something like that, but it's in, it's in multiples of nine inches. So I'm gonna see approximately where nine inches is. That's pretty close to 18 inches. It's going to be right about in here. And we're just going to cut these right in half. All right, now the pork butt. I bought a seven and a half pound pork butt and I used a mojo marinade. Now you can easily make your own mojo marinade. There's a ton of recipes online. Just look you up a good one. But what I did was bought the Bidea Mojo Marinade, store-bought, bought it by the gallon. And that is some really good stuff. This is not a promotional video for them. It's just, I really like this product. So that's what I went with. And I did an injection first. I took and I injected it very, very well all the way through. And then I went into a Ziploc bag, poured the marinade, used just about all of it to get good coverage on it pushed out the air, zipped up the bag. I put it in the fridge overnight. You can go up to 24 hours with this marinade. I think I went somewhere around 16 hours. And from there, I took it and put it in a roasting pan, went into an oven at 325 degrees and cooked it till I hit 190 degrees internal temperature let it rest, and then the, uh, put it in the fridge after that. And then the next day I sliced it thin, kind of like lunch meat, and here it is. All right, the second meat that I used is a ham. I've got a boneless ham that was already pre-sliced. And so I put that in a roasting pan and I brought the temperature up to 225 degrees in the oven and the internal temperature hit 130, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. I removed it, I put the sugar coating all over it. And then from there I went back into the oven and I blasted it at like 450 degrees just to caramelize that sugar and get it syrupy and melting. And that put a nice sweet crust on this ham, delicious. So this video not only is it showing you how to make an authentic Cuban sandwich, but you could do this pork as a standalone pork dish, fantastic with a mojo marinade, or you can do this ham like this for like a Christmas ham, a Easter ham. So that's two little benefits along with this video that could be used for other things. You want to preheat the meat to ensure that you 
have a good warm sandwich all the way through and give that cheese a chance to really melt. You want it good melted. Alright, so let's build it. And the way they start off, now I didn't see anything or read anything on Miami, but Tapa says that this has to be built in this order for these flavors to hit the palate just right. Starting with the sweet ham at the bottom. Then we're gonna get a layer of this roast pork. That roast is incredible, y'all. It's great all on its own. So is that ham. Oh yeah. Two slices of Swiss cheese, just like this. Now this is the Miami version. So from here, you wanna take kosher dill pickles, more of a sour pickle. And I'm only putting two on here, one here and one here. All right, I'm gonna spin the plate around. Yellow mustard. Now I have seen people take a yellow mustard and a mayo and mix it. Like two thirds mustard, one third mayo, 50-50, same different things. But the uh, purists will tell you that it's not an authentic Cuban sandwich unless it's just straight up mustard. And if you read the history on that, you, you'll really understand why. So get your good healthy layer of mustard and you want to spread it out from one end to the other. This is the Miami version. Okay, let's go ahead and put the Tampa version together. Same thing. Not really going to bore you. All I'm doing is stacking the same exact thing on this sandwich to begin with. Now the one thing that Tampa does unlike Miami is they go on with a Genoa salami. Miami does not. Now if you do look up the history on the Tampa version you will find out that what this sandwich represents is all the immigrant workers that actually worked right there at uh, Tampa in the cigar factories. So every ingredient represents one of the cultures that worked in there. You had the Cuban bread, you had ham for Spanish, you had the pork Cuban, you've got the salami for Italian, the Swiss cheese, that is what holds it all together. That's more of a, you've heard of the word melting pot of cultures. Well, that's what this represents. The pickles and the mustard represents German. So I'm gonna get the mustard on this top piece, get it on there. I'll meet you over here at the plancha. The sandwich press is warm, it's heated up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take melted butter and put all over the top of this. Now we're gonna do our bottom plate here. On with our sandwiches. So we're just looking for a nice crispy golden crust on this. Should take around three minutes, three to four minutes. Alrighty, let's take a look at this and see how we're looking. Man, that is perfect. Look at that nice crispy crust on there. Melty cheese, we are good. All right, let's go over here and I'm gonna show you how to cut this. So the Cuban sandwich is cut on an extreme bias, just like this. I'm gonna try to use my slicer knife. Oh yeah, that's gonna work just fine. All right, so if you go into a lot of places there in Miami, 
they're gonna just serve these potato sticks with it, just like that. And if you go into Tampa, they usually serve it up with plantain chips, just like that. So the only difference is the Tampa has the Genoa salami, the Miami doesn't. You ready? I'm ready. Which one we're we gonna try first? We're gonna do the Miami style first. Okay. See what you think. So you start just like a pizza at that point it in when you done figured that out, ain't oh, you? Oh yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Man, that just works. That mojo pork is just amazing in that, and it really shines through. The sandwich really don't make sense if you think about it. You know, well, it kind of does. But the mustard, the pickle, you know, Swiss cheese. It, but it's probably one of the best freaking sandwiches you'll ever have, and it's hot and melty. Let's go with the Tampa style. It's gonna be basically the same thing with a got that Italian thing going on with the salami. Man, that combination of meats with the ham and the mojo and everything is just outstanding. What do you think? Man, that is sick, dude. Sick? Yeah, you know, sick. I thought you'd like it. You don't like the salami no, no, in there? No, 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 you don't get it. That thing's amazing. That's what I'm saying. It's sick. It's, it's amazing good. Oh, well, why didn't you say that? Well, you know, hey, y'all us youngsters nowadays, we say sick. Well, I'm sure y'all want to know my favorite of the two. They're very, very similar, first off. But I do like that addition of salami in there, but I love salami. And uh, it's a well thought out sandwich, really. They've been around for a long, long time. I hope you give them a try. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'm Russ Jones. I'm Derek Jones. We are Smoky Ribs Barbecue.